transmission. It happened that some media houses published some treacherous, misinformed, and unjustified allegations against me as the Minister of Agriculture in relation to the issue of the expired fertilizer that are stored in different stores around the country. In one of the publications, it was written that I signed a contract with a businessman for the sale of the fertilizer for financial gains personal. I would like to say here, sincerely, that this statement is unfounded, malicious, and deformatory. As a minister, I have never been involved in this transaction, nor signed any contract with any contractor or businessman, nor knew when the contract was signed, and I have not known anything about the contract until long after the contract was signed. The process of this fertilizer started in 2009, when it was important to the Gambia 9,500 tons. And it was found out that it was bad and unfit for usage. The company that imported the fertilizer, the proprietor was arrested, and some of the members of the ministry were detained because of this issue. In 2014, the process to discard the fertilizer was started, and from the information I gathered, all these documents will be provided to you today that the due process was followed, and all agencies and institutions that should be contacted were contacted. Therefore, I could not understand how I can be associated with a process that started in 2014, when I started a minister in February 2017. And as I said, I was never contacted by any of the contracts, including even the officers who have the right to do what they were doing, because they are the technical experts of agriculture, in order to dis dispose of this fertilizer that has become toxic and environmentally hazardous, and it was really bad for the health of both humans and animals. All of you will be given copies of the contract, letters of approval for the discarding of the fertilizer from the GPPA, letters from the GEC, which was the custodian of this fertilizer, and other relevant authorities and correspondents and the NEA. About eight months ago, the ISIS, the former NIA, began an investigation into this fertilizer issue. They came and investigated and interviewed all my senior personnel. And at the last time, they thought that they, they, they wanted to see me. And I said, yes, come and come, I'll see you all. They came to my office. And this was about eight months ago. They didn't ask me any question. They just told me that they have come. They were asked to interview my peers and my procurement officer, and they have just come to um, pay a courtesy call. But I told them once, and I will not have allowed you to come to my office, but because of the respect I have for your institution, I thought, if I am Minister of Agriculture, and the persons who ask you to come and investigate, they should have consulted me and if, if it is the president, the president has a right to call me and ask me about it. And if he is not satisfied with what I said, then he would have taken a different division because he is the ultimate decider of any action within this government. <coughs> but I said to the team of SIC officers, I said, fortunately, the people who signed the contract are here, ask them whether I was involved or contact before they did. And all of them said to the IS people that the minister was never <laughs>
of this you know just information to come forward and provide with evidence that I signed the contract with evidence that I received financial gain from this contract for the new dispensation I thought we were going to do away with stressing people and families and we'll make sure as long as all of us wants to make sure we build a peaceful democratic country based on respect for human rights, rule of law, and of course a free press. We thought one of the main important things because of the importance of press freedom in a country and its contribution to a democratic dispensation and peace, the ethics of the profession has to be respected and held to the highest extent. So I thought, as long as I'm in Gambia, I'm not going anywhere. Before anybody publishes such a statement that I've signed a contract for monetary gains, why not contact me? If I refuse to speak, then you can publish that. We have the information, we contacted the minister, and he refused to respond. Then you can make your own dish. Then nobody will blame you. That is why I want, just want you to allow me that I started my political career in 68. I became part of parliament in 77. And I led teams to the United Nations, to the AU, to all these places. But before that, I was a corporate inspector. I have never, there were so many cooperative staff in this country who were jailed for misappropriation of uh, funds in the cooperatives. I have never ever supervised a society where there were shortages. And I worked with the cooperative movement for seven years. Then I became a staff of the Gambia Commercial Bank in 1972. And I was sent to study in, America, in Ghana to do development financing. I came and I was the loan officer of the development wing of the commercial bank. From there, I become Minister of Water Resources, Environment, Fisheries, and Forestry. And I make sure I assisted all these people that have fisheries projects in this country. Then I became Minister of Agriculture in 89. I headed the minister for four or five years before the coup d'etat. And from there, I became a consultant of the FAO in Accra, in the FAO office. And after that, I joined the UN in East Timor and became a senior officer in East Timor. If I ever wanted money, I'd stay there because I was taking home $6,000 in 1999. Why should I resign to come because of I love this country? Then I struggled to make sure I get rid of the <coughs> What happened to me? has not happened to any opportunity in this country. It's on record. Why should anybody think that at my age now, I'll try to get money illegally or unscrupulously for what? That's why I said I will call up this press conference to talk to the press and clear the air. And I'm ready to answer any question that you wish to ask. Because I thought my family should have been spared after the year in Jamaica. I've been in prison for 20, 22 times. I lost my eye. I lost friends. My wife was taken to the NIA on two acres and stayed, kept there for one, four weeks. I thought now in the new dispensation, there should be respect for individual liberties and freedoms. And there should be respect for individuals put your opinions. Why should we start castigating each other without having the foundation and the proof? I think this has to stop. That is why I've consulted my lawyer. Because my family in Europe, in America, in Gambia, and my friends, my relatives, all these weeks cannot sleep. When everybody in the in, uh, international media is talking about OJ stealing, fertilizer, 
The minister has stolen fertilizer. This is unfortunate. I be in present government to be here. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, you start from the back. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, um, Honorable Minister, for calling this uh, very important uh, press conference because as, as of now, this is the uh, burning issue that everyone is talking about. And it's good that you come and face the journalists to also deny the um, allegations. Hearing from you, I understand that, you know, you are innocent. To the, uh, media, uh, media outlet that published what you call unfounded allegation in court. You know, into this uh, media publication. Do you really intend? Do I have a right to protect my speech? Is that tragedy? Yeah. When people at my age and with all I have, what I have done for this country want to undermine my integrity in the presence of my family, I will never step back this time. I'm going to the court. Yes. Let them prove. Next question. It says it will like If they have the proof, let them bring it. Because I don't think anybody can say, let me quote here, uh, in, in, in one of the documents that I have read, why is it again? The Gambian Agricultural Minister Omar Jam has, for financial reasons, acquired a Gambian businessman in the sale of tons of expired fertilizer in Senegal and the Gambia. <coughs> when I forgot to tell you, never knew this mode giver till far after when he, when, he, uh, when he had already signed this contract with the Ministry. But, but you are aware that a contract of this particular fertilizer was signed by um, the minister. You see that uh, from the documents I'm giving, Mr. Diba wrote on the 5th of March 2017, that was I was less than a month in my office. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I might start by saying that Kerfad did via email and several calls here are fallen and a testament or text message sent also is in my phone very far. On the day itself, at the same time with the presidency. I'm just coming, I'm coming with follow up. There is an evidence of that. So, uh, my question is uh, the careful part of the process, which is something that President Adam about, done by SIS, military intelligence at State House, and the government, and the constitution by the report, supported at the end of those. Is that Omar Jalo, as you put it in that report, has connived with a private businessman to profit from the disposal of the fertilizer. And this is the same report that the presidency has acknowledged last week that they have sent to Attorney General for advice. Is it your position that as careful, Barrow is also endorsing and colluding with his own private security institutions? and unjustified publications against. Thank you very much. I'm happy to hear from you for the first time that the IS has made a report. I've never had it anywhere. And I think, as I said, the president is not afraid of me. He's the one who appointed me, and he has the powers, all powers to dismiss me. I think I should have been consulted. I will say that I will not accept that story. It is wrong. It is unfounded. I will appeal to Kerfat to get the report and bring it to court. Let them see why it was endorsed by the president and the eyes that Omar Jalo signed a contract for military gains that I resigned my job. 
Let the report come to the court, endorsed by the president. Let him make no. Let him make a follow up. Because no, I said one question at a time. Who wants to take a? Okay. Let, let another guy ask. Honourable Minister, according to the Kerfazo report, I am Alaji Mane of the Standard Newspaper. Um, there was an instruction for these um, absolute fertilizers to be kept in store. Now, who gave the order um, um, for its removal from the store? I'm happy that you asked the question. Fortunately, I have all the documents here. In 2016, the GPPA, which is the authority of government that can discuss of government assets, gave approval to the experts who are working on this issue to dispose of the fertilizer. And it is a premise on that, with a particip active participation of the GPPA and NEA, that these experts sat down and decided a process and a way and manner in which to dispose of the fertilizer. <coughs> and this was in 2016. And that was wrong before I became minister. Yeah. I'm Sir. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, my question is a short one. Uh, how does the fertilizer land into the hands of uh, Momodo Diba as alleged? I think that is for the question you will see those who have signed the contract. For you to question those who have signed the contract. As I said, and I'm ready to go anywhere in the world and said when it was negotiated, I was not consulted. I went in black and white. Nobody consulted me about the contract or the, or the fertilizer. Until it was given. But I think that they are the experts. And they have a responsibility, as long as NEA was involved, GPPA was involved, and the Minister of Involved, and the GGC was involved. These are the people who are the experts on this. I'm not an agricultural expert. I'm a policy maker. Okay. I just want to ask, uh, Honourable Minister, my name is Anjaya Faraday Stevens. You said you were barely one month in office when this contract was signed, and it involves officials of your ministry. Um, yes. Was there an instance where this issue came to your desk? Okay. And what did you do? I said it only came to my desk when the ISIS came to my office. So you were not aware of it? That's what I said. Yes. I've said it clearly. But you knew about this. I don't. There is, there is a fertilizer, there is some fertilizer that is not fit and should be disposed of. Should be disposed of, yes. Because I, I visited it uh, when I became minister for when I was visiting it to my under my preview. And that was after about seven or eight months when the president transferred the responsibility of GGC from Minister of Finance to Minister of Agriculture. And that was long after the fertilizer, uh, the, uh, the contract was signed. Yes. Thank you. What step did you take on what? when you had a buy? They have taken the, the court. The experts have suffered. As I said, GPPA is responsible for disposal of government assets. Yes. They are responsible. They have the authority, not me. And they sat with other institutions that have the authority. Because this was becoming an environmental and health hazard. And to dispose of it would have cost Gambia millions of dollars. That's what I'm saying. Still, we have stores full of this fertilizer. And you have heard, just before I left, there was somebody in Marsakongo who reported that animals are being killed <coughs> if they go near the store where the fertilizer is. And we have one store in Birkama. They are all filled, full with this spoiled fertilizer. It's hazardous. Yes. I am uh, Pamudu Piara. Uh, Honorable Minister, as from part where? of your, from, where? From, where? from Gambian Heights, yeah. as part of your uh, portfolio, uh, <coughs> don't you think it is your mandate to review? All the files that are under you as agri minister to review to, to review, review all the files yes. that are under you as agri minister. Okay, what you should understand that government is made of institutions, and institutions in general have a mandate and a terms of reference. 
And as I said, this fertilizer came into Gambia in 2009 mm. under the realm of Yaya Jambi. Then the fertilizer was given to the GGC. So the GGC is the one who was in custody of this fertilizer. And you will find from the records that I'm going to give to you, the letter written by GGC in 2016 to the Ministry of Agriculture, they need to use their stores and government should do everything possible to get rid of the fertilizer, the managing diet of the GGC road. And in follow-up, that is why when they started the process of how to discard of the fertilizer, long before I sat in this office. You talked about consulting or you said you've consulted your lawyers and considered them taking necessary steps. What steps? To court, for them to prove that I have benefited financially from it. What would you be suing, and then I have, suing for? I, for? Huh? What would you be suing for? Defamation. Ah, defamation? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Come well, on, man. Hello, Minister. My name is Abu Bakar Sidikan. I am a freelance journalist and a program uncle at Star FM Radio. I have, right. Yes, I have, I have listened to your, to your deliberations and it is quite clear. Um, but my question to you is only going to be one question. Is um, uh, these are uh, serious allegations yes. with, with, with regards to your personality. Personality. Yeah. Um, and you have right to go to court and then clear the air. Yes, but um, don't you think, with your experience in politics and the office that you are currently occupying, don't you think it is better for you to resolve this matter alternatively than to go to court? Because the president has been informed and there are... I, I'm, I'm not quoting you. I'm ready to lose my job. I didn't look for minister. I never thought I'd come back to him as a minister in the 22 years that I've been thrown in prison in and out. I was ready to make the ultimate sacrifice for my country. Mm -hmm. That's why I stayed, mm -hmm. when everybody ran away. Mm -hmm. I am ready to lose my job to get to the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. I have a family. Mm -hmm. And I think it's enough now for me to be going through treasures and these problems. There is so much of stress within my family, both abroad and in Gambia, mm -hmm. and my friends. This is not right. I am the most open politician mm -hmm. to the press in Gambia. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Why can they not come and contact me? Mm -hmm. I've not run away. I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. It's okay. as simple as that. Mm -hmm. I follow up, but the president has powers to ask you to drop it. If you can. If the prove. president asks me to drop it, I refuse. Hey, all of you, Mune. Do you want to be able to do it? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Can we speak one question at a time? Omar. Thank you very much. Um, I am Omar Ba from the Standard newspaper. Um, Honorable Minister, um, the report that was published by the by the Gilfad Network actually threw out, quoted a report that is an investigation done by by the um, SIAs and some military agents at the at the state house and which actually the, the, the alleged the president have have approved. Uh, I just want to know um, what about if it comes to the fact that the president actually approved that report and it was authenticated by the SIS and the and the and, and the military and the and the intelligence military at the state house. What will be your response? I will I will resign my job but I will take make sure I take them to court for them to prove what they have alleged that I've done. Because I know that I have not done anything, I am not part of it, they can have their own problems. We know Gambians. Sometimes people don't like my face. Sometimes people don't like the way I behave. Sometimes people don't like my uncompromising stance. That's their business. But what I'm saying is, the courts have to claim. Because even if the IC says, I have been involved, they came only once to my office. And they didn't ask me any question. How can they know how involved I was? When there is no signatory of mine on any document, there is none in any of the documents where my name was involved that I participated in the process. How can they achieve? How can they come to such a conclusion? <coughs> Uh, you have said uh, earlier on, Kepfadu has not explored any measure to verify the information given to us before the public. 
And we've heard from a part of the that they have reached out to certain people, which you have, or which, for, for instance, the, the, a report, they are writing on reports from the NIA, SIS current report, and the president. So, have you not been betrayed by somebody whom they have reached to, who should relate the information to you? That's why I said, if there is betrayal, there is treachery, the only place to resolve this is in the courts. Wait for me. If the president appointed me and mandated ISIS under his preview to come and investigate my minister, if he has from the report and he read it and he is convinced that the IS are, are, uh, is, a, is a factual report, why is stopping him from removing me as minister? Why should it, I, OJ, as the minister, hear it from somewhere else? That's why I said, let them bring the report to the court. Simple. <coughs> but you say you have never, they have never explored to verify, and they have, they have said they have contacted somebody next to you. That person has never read the information to you. They have That's contacted person, somebody next to me? Yes, via email. They mentioned the information on me. Who? Can I respond? Yes. Can I respond? Um, I was contacted um, the day the story was published. <coughs> When it has already been published? Before it was published, two or three hours before it was published, mm -hmm. I was sent an email by Mr. Fadam. And um, my response to him was, these were last year's allegations. I have heard of this allegation through an investigating journalist, but the story was never published. I did not even give him approve, approval to quote me. And I have also, asked, I have also told him not to publish the story, that was exactly what I told you. The question is, and, and, and because there are consequences if you publish a story without proof. Mm -hmm. These allegations have no proof. Kirfato should, if they have proof, they should have published the story with their proof. With their report? Yes, with their proof. These are, you cannot publish a story without, and allegations without proof, without any evidence. That is what we are dealing with here. Wait, wait. If there is a said report, if there is a said report, wait, wait. No, you have already made, 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 made your statement. If there are allegations, if, there, if the said report exists, that that is their evidence, let them bring forth the evidence. If, if they publish a the story based on hearsay, Without an evidence, we have every right, the Honorable Minister have every right to clear his name. Mm -hmm. Now that they said there is a said report uh, at the um, Attorney General's office, the Attorney General will review the said report and do what's right. Mm -hmm. No, I want to just add to this that then the Attorney General has a right. If they are the people who gave these people the report, when these people are going to court, let them give a copy of the report, mm -hmm. the court. Mm -hmm and clear themselves. It's as simple as that. Because me as minister, I have never been involved in the process. So I want to see the investigators who have not asked me one question, how they arrived to the fact that I am guilty of something that transpired from 2009 to 2014. That's what I want. Yeah, that's all. Honorable Minister, no, you... No, say no, you, say no. Yeah. We didn't know, I didn't know okay, you did that. I, I, I have so we allow chance. others yeah. to speak. Anyone? Please. You have it. Thank you. No. Okay. You already have your chance. Give um, fire to others. Um, uh, no. Honorable Minister, um, if this allegation has anything to go by, mm -hmm. many believe that um, uh, there is sort of um, repetition mm -hmm. of the then... Uh, regime where you were one time far out. That, uh, yes, that uh, uh, some of such things normally used to happen by then. Oh, I see. Yeah. What's your take on that? Thank you very much for coming with this. I was one of the few fortunate Gambians to be the youngest minister ever in Gambian history. And I served for 14 years. And my government existed for 29 years. And when the coup took place, you can remember, Lieutenant Colonel Yaya Jambe saying we rampant corruption. Fortunately, they set up four commission of inquiries. And the commission of inquiry where Sir Dauda and all his ministers went before was the Bamfo Commission. Degree number 11 established the Bamfo Commission. And it said 
the commission will sit in public and the report will be made public. I would like you people to go to the archives of the observer and the point. All the other three commissions made their report public up to today. That is the only commission that has never <coughs> ever published their report. And that was the commission that's why that's what I have confirmed. Yeah, yeah James claim that there was rampant corruption in this country. Anybody who talks about rampant corruption in PPP, you are just talking out of the docks. It's not true. Let the commission report come out. And so, where Sir Dauda, myself, and all other ministers were corrupt. They called us to this commission for 11 months. I challenged the commission, and they arrested me, and I was being taken to the mile two. Every morning, they called me from mile two to the commission. Because I refused to accept my rights to be violated because they thought they can do anything or any time. I refused. And now I'm saying, anybody who's interested, I think the most important commission that sat in this country was the Bamfo Commission. Because Sir Dauda and all the ministers went before that commission. And the left degree number 11 that established it said, the commission will sit in public and will be made the report public up to today. Not any Gambian except the four members of the AFPRC saw the report. So if anybody is accused of corruption, you lie. respect authority and rule of law and process. If the president of his instituted an investigation, you know, then you want to investigate, you see the ISIS. For now, you have a responsible view of that. You have to be able to prepare this report. You have to be able to prepare this report. You have to be able to prepare this report. But you have to be able to do it. Because it was the president of his family. You have to investigate agriculture and other institutions. They went throughout the whole country on this investigation. Lady Sudan Yom, them name better investigation. Begis Lin Waragis, design the Lilay Waram, this name is the Lily, Lady Lilay Bugamu, Alilay Bugamu, do a do a do, Yom name Waragis, Yom Yom Amelie, Yom name Waragli, ugly, ugly. For Nanakon, you mean like in authority. What are you going? Why two malarek, two malarek, you name investigate them, talk. Eight months, but I can't do that. The minister, how many people do you want to do you want to job? Do what you want to do. How many good young? Bring the face and investigate. Learn the job. Agla learn this. Agla learn ham. Agla learn what? Um, thank you very much. I'm grateful for this opportunity. Um, you said, honourable minister, that in the process of the disposal of the fertilizer. Now, I am in custody of um, the NEA report you are talking about. And the NEA report categorically stated that this fertilizer should be tested in the lab. Do you have an evidence of this fertilizer test being tested by your office in the lab before it's disposed? I'm happy that you brought it because I see in the document <coughs> that we have brought for me. That's why I prepared all of you to see that the NEA proposed that the fertilizer should be tested in Dakar, and that was in 2016. That's not during my time. I became minister 2017. When it was disposed? No, wait. I'm coming. So they said, already the government of the day at that time, with their officers, 
have already known that the fertilizer is not good. Why should we spend money in order to see fertilizer that were in the stores from 2009? The ingredients are expired. They can never be used again. Just to get rid of this fertilizer would have cost us millions of dollars. And everybody knew. The experts knew. That's why they didn't do it. They knew that it's not correct. That's why the GPPA, which have authority, allow the committee to dispose of the fertilizer. You know what I'm saying? But they, who said that there was no money for the disposal of the fertilizer? The institution that were there before. That was in 2016. I was not there. Yeah. But uh, excuse me if I am interrupting too much. Um, the NEA report categorically clear that this fertilizer has toxic substances which could harm people and the environment. I'm mm -hmm. Now, you are the custodian of farmers in this country. Now, you found it okay a month into your office, or two, that this fertilizer and this one of your business has been discharged by your officials under your watch without your not because I have evidence of it. And let me, let me read something to you uh, about an ECO, what an ECOWAS protocol says about this. Because the Gambia government is currently in contravention of an ECOWAS protocol, a treaty that is binding on Gambia, which states that member states undertake individual and collective to take every appropriate step to prohibit the importation, transiting, dumping, and bearing of facilities and toxic substances in their respective territories. Thank you very much. Gambia government violated and they don't, treaty they didn't. and binding on them. They didn't. Uh, in nature, by let the me, nature of the let me, let me teach you some lesson. <laughs> Fortunately, fertilizers that have lost their potential can be reactivated. Fortunately, it's only Senegal and Mauritania and Ivory Coast that has it in West Africa. That is why the Senegalese were buying it taking it to activate the ingredients in the fertilizer so that they can use it for other purposes. That's why the Senegal authorities were allowing them to go. The only person who was arrested was the one taking it to Mauritania, not the one going to Senegal. So many trucks have gone to Senegal. Can I interrupt? No, no, please. No, allow me. When you are talking, I don't interrupt. I don't interrupt. So the agreement to, to reactivate the fertilizer is only Senegal, Mauritania, and Ghana that has that um, uh, capacity to do it. That is why. And when they arrested the Mauritanian, the Mauritanian ambassador intervened, and the man was arrested. The man was released. No, I, I want to. No, no, no it's listen, a follow. Allow, it's allow, a follow. Allow the, the Mauritanian, I, uh, based on the information I have, because I just met Mr. Dip, the, uh, the gentleman who was uh, given the contract to dispose the fertilizer, and I want to ascertain that Mr. Dibba's responsibility is selling coos and mess. Coos and mess at Sandika. I met him this morning. Now, your ministry found it okay to contract someone who said who's an mess. Disposal, not reactivate, the language is disposal of a fertilizer in Senegal. And the mechanism to confirm how this fertilizer is used. That is a security problem. What we have agreed in government. And in the contract, you will give you a copy. They have not informed the only condition they gave to him that one bag of this fertilizer should not be sold in Gambia. If he does and he is arrested, they will they will deal with him. Because we know Gambia doesn't have the means to get fertilizer. And then it is not our responsibility. There are so many business people who are doing business between Gambia and Senegal, between Gambia and other countries. Who are we to dictate? How many who sellers are now doing other businesses in Gambia here? If I am only a Bitikinar man, doesn't mean I can sell bread. 
Selling bread doesn't mean I cannot sell a bag of rice. I don't think we should try to compete on this. That's not fair. Mm. What I'm saying is, the fertilizer should be got rid of. If not, it will affect human beings and animals. And if the government wanted to get rid of it, they will spend millions and millions to do it. Now, there are people who can assure them that they can get rid of it and not sell anything Gambia. But the countries that can reactivate the fertilizer, who are we to stop? Yeah. Uh, yes. Clearly, there is a report, a report that the presidency is aware of. Mm -hmm. The presidency is telling us that this report is at the AG's chambers. They are waiting for advice. And there is a lot of talk surrounding this issue, and the president or the presidency hasn't spoken to you about this issue. Uh, do you feel betrayed by the president? No. You know, me, I see myself as a human being. And God has never created a perfect human being. We all make mistakes. And through our imperfections, that is why even human beings have never perfect people. There is no perfect system. There is no perfect government. Let the report be published for the whole Gambia to consume. And if any of us found ourselves wanting, either the president has a right to sack us or we, re we all resign our jobs. Simple. But for me, I have not yet had this report has been, I have seen from when I was in China, from the president's uh, press officer, saying that the report is now ready. And uh, it is with the Attorney General Chambers. Yes, I'm waiting. Yeah. Let the Attorney General Chambers make their decision and then let us be contacted. If they make a decision that OJ was found liable, let them prove it. But you work under him, so it's only fair that he, he talks to you about it. But I said that in my first statement, what I was saying. Yeah. But I said we make mistakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so and the president is no exception. Okay. Okay. I um, said there is no problem with my being. Uh, I can only take two more questions. Yeah, yes. I know. I, um, uh, th th thank you. Thank you very much for entertaining a lot of questions. I think the most important thing is to clear the doubt of the public. I have two questions to ask. Um, considering the toxic nature of this fertilizer, and still there are stores that are storing this fertilizer, they're still harmful to both human and animal. How soon can we get rid of this fertilizer? and make sure that you know we live in a safe country. We are facing with a lot of environmental challenges. And if you try to dump this thing in any community, you will face another resistance. Sure. So I'm just, my worry is how soon are we seeing that these uh, toxic fertilizers are disposed? That's because why. you are talking about government um, spending millions of uh, uh, dollars yes. just to dispose these fertilizers. Yes. Because so 9,500 tons. Sure. That's about how many thousands of bucks? 150,000 or so. That's what I'm saying. I said the whole vision of the people who started the process of 2016 was to get rid of this fertilizer so that we don't harm Gambians. And I think the best way was if we can get it out of this country because we don't have the millions to destroy it. Now, if they go into partnership or into contact with a business can take somewhere where it can be useful. Why are we stopping? That's my question. Please, let me let me. No, 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 no. You ask too many questions. I'm very simple. I'm very simple. No, no. Ami, Ami, Ami has the right. Ami has the right. No, no, no. This is very. Ami has the right. Please, this is very. It's a follow. It's a follow. Oh, Ami, Ami, Ami. No, you don't say this. Let me go ahead. Yes. Minister of Action from my side. <laughs> <laughs> you were not in office when the, team, uh, when the report, when the contract was been given. You were not informed by the right people. With regards to your experience, don't you see this is a kind of a conspiracy around your ministry? Do you agree? I agree with you that there is a conspiracy, not around my ministry, but around OJ. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, you know. I am a politician all and out, and I will always ever be a politician. With respect of I just give an example. I went to America with the First Lady, with all the ambassadors. 
and they make a nice banquet. And we're enjoying ourselves. But they came all day and showed OJ dancing and <laughs> tell me everything in the world that you can think of. But why just OJ? When, that's why I was happy. <coughs> when they asked me, I said, up to today, today when I'm talking to you, mm -hmm. I go tonight. Everybody knows that he's Every year, what I used to do, sat down and will speak up with him, and they will dance. If they have shown uh, Makisala and the president of France dancing, if the king of Mecca, who is and tell me the custodian of the two holy mosques, they can dance, what would And I was not born a minister, but I'll continue saying what I feel and I want. When I was born in a mud house in Old Utah, who, who said I was going to be a minister? And my father said in China, and my mother's fortune. Why should I want to This is it. Yeah. We should start this new dispensation. One, because we came together with one mission and one vision. And one vision and one mission. Like more the our parties, our parties, leaders, and all the tribes, and all the tribal leaders put together. That is my problem. That I am not in for party. I am not in for tribe. I am the Gambia. That's why I say I went to prison 22 times. Lost my eye. Lost a best one of my best for Jabot. And three of four has been my country. That's why I'm here. I'm going to stay here. And if anything happens whereby I'm removed, who am I? Are you a minister? Am I better than you? I go back to Serekunda and be part of Serekunda. Simple. I'm saying what I'm saying. Thank you very much. I mean, this is important. Thank you very much. Thank you. One question. All right. One question. One question. Abimisi, why is he? I have been for four years now. I have to move fast. And then people uh, tell me that they are always happy. I take my phone, run the police operations director, and say, I told the detaining people for over 72 hours have ceased with the item. But I'm coming to my, into my car with my coro to the police. Five minutes. Five minutes. Then three days after, a gentleman came to my house. He said, I'm the one who uh, Edu Gomez came and you uh, 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 um, help him, help him to bail you. I want to thank you. Who are you? My name is Mudiba. That's the first day I saw him. That's the first day I knew him. And that was long after he had signed the contract. I'm not interested. I was not involved. They're not contacting me. That's why I asked you, do you want the documents? I want you all to go through the documents and see where, wherever. And
And, we, we, and the next one, we are expecting because it seems this year farming season is not looking good. So we have to brief the press about that.